All right, guys, in part three, we're going to finish up the mid-century modern stereo rack. There's a lot of neat details involved in this project. We'll do the final assembly and get into finishing details with some Danish oil and lacquer top coat. Stick around. We'll jump right into it. We do have a bit of sanding with these side panels and you know these long grooves are a really interesting detail but that will add some sanding labor to the process so we'll get going on that and see if we can smooth out these grooves and make everything ready for glue up and then ready for a finish. Just a little bit of light fine tuning here with the hand plane and we'll have these legs fitting just perfectly. Got to have a little bit of room for the glue as we make this assembly. And that'll be looking good. So just a few swipes with a hand plane I think is all it took and we should have a nice fit again. Yeah, that'll come together just right. Okay, with the joinery all fitted, I think we're ready to glue up the side panels to the legs. So we'll have a left and a right to the stereo rack and set those aside to dry overnight. Once we're nice and flush at the top here, that's of course our focus with this glue up, but once that's flush on top, we can draw the clamps tight and set this aside to dry. Okay, we need to make a web frame now. We'll build that with half lap joints. It's gonna sit in the top notch of the stereo rack. And one of the first lessons I learned about woodworking was instead of taking your dimensions from the plan, take your dimensions directly from the work. With that concept in mind, we'll Plain some maple stock until it's just flush with the top of the stereo rack and that looks like that'll be the perfect thickness for our web frame. Now we're setting the Fusion F2 up for half lap joints. The easy way to set your rip fence is just to use the stock itself and when you're flush with the tooth then you know you have your rip fence setting correct. The other setting we're interested in is the blade height. We've got three quarter inch stock so we'll start our blade height setting a little bit less than three quarters of an inch. That'll be a good place to start and we'll work up from there incrementally. Just bring your pieces together to see how you did. We need to cut quite a bit deeper, so we'll increase the blade height and make another pass. And when you have a perfect fit on your test cut, go ahead and extend those cuts for full half lap joints on all four corners. Now, what do I like so much about half lap joints for web frames? Almost everything. As you go to put the joints together, they're really self-squaring. So just clamp it in two directions and you know you're gonna come up with a square frame. Also, there's a lot of surface area for the glue, which makes this one of the strongest joints in woodworking. Another reason I like about this, the dimension of the frame is the same as the dimension of the parts. So, if you want a 23 by 23 web frame, just make all your parts 23 inches long and you'll be good to go. We don't have to be too careful with the glue on these half lap joints because we'll actually trim everything at the table saw after the glue dries. I actually made these an eighth of an inch oversize overall and that way it just allows for a finished looking joint after that final trimming pass is made.
Just a couple key points about the final assembly here. In terms of wood movement, we wanted to prevent any issues at the web frame. So what we did is we glued only the front of the web frame into the stereo rack. At the back, it's simply secured through pocket hole screws at the top. We've kind of doubled those up and elongated the holes to allow for wood movement. Another useful thing is we've used the off cuts from the walnut legs just taped in place as clamping calls. Just put those smooth side in. They're a great help when it comes time for glue up. Well, we're making some good progress on it now. All we have left to do at this point is to cut the top panel to size, create that under bevel on three sides of the top, sand the top, plug the holes, do a little light finish sanding, chisel away, hammer away. We got a little work like this to do. After that, we'll finish up with a little fine finish hand sanding, and then this project will be ready for Danish oil and lacquer. The European style high-low fence on the Fusion F2 is really handy when it comes time to cut the tapers on the underside of the top panel. That extra fence height really works to our advantage for these cuts. We'll route out the grommet opening in the top panel with our two-step process, starting with a quarter inch spiral bit and a 3 8 inch guide bushing. Finally, with a spiral pattern bit, always moving in a clockwise direction. Alright guys, that'll wrap things up for the mid-century modern stereo rack. I hope you enjoyed the process or learned a little tidbit along the way. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.